Tamdu, 15 year old. Hello and welcome to Whiskey Whims with me, Stuart. Today we're going to be exploring this uh, 15 year old expression from Tamdu Distillery. Tamdu translates in Gaelic as little dark hill or little black hill, I think it's little dark hill. Um, it's a distillery I've not had too much experience with because I believe a lot of their malts go to blend. Uh, I think some go to, is it Cutty Sark, Famous Grouse and other, other blends. Yeah, I think there's another one. Uh, it was founded in 1897 or 1896 I think and by 1897 they had their first malt, their first whiskey. They exclusively mature their whiskey in Oloroso casks. Natural colour this one is, it's 46% ABV, 15 year old and 80 pound uh, is the RRP. So it's quite up there in sense of price for a 15 year old whiskey. Considering um, the likes of Springbank 15, Glenfinnich 15, other 15 year olds, it's quite uh, pricey. Although obviously it uses other also sherry casks, which aren't the cheapest uh, way to mature whiskey. But they don't want to change that fact. They want to make sure they're always maturing in Oloroso. And I'm pretty sure it is exclusively Oloroso whiskey. The distillery itself um, is the only distillery round about the area that has no pagoda, uh, pagoda. Pagoda? Pagoda? Yes, that's right. It doesn't sound right in my head. Pagoda like roofs. Um, over their furnaces. So a lot of other distilleries have those uh, kind of Chinese, the pagoda looking roofs, whereas Tamdu doesn't have that. The distillery was briefly closed in 2010 and then acquired by Ian McLeod Distillers in 2011. They began producing in 2013. I think Ian McLeod also owns Rosebank, Glen Goyne, and I'm not sure if they do Smokehead. I think they have Smokehead as well. So the bottle itself, it's a nice bottle, nice looking. Uh, it's got sharp edges here, cuts and that, kind of quite fancy looking bottle. The box, obviously fancy looking as well. Uh, maybe that's where some of the eight pounds going, but I'm not entirely sure. Nice packaging, but the packaging isn't what we're here to talk about, it's the whiskey. So you can see I've spent a lot of time with this, and I think it's a fair enough um, moment in its journey to give it a review. So we'll get down to the nose. There's a small acidic like um, scent, I think it's pineapple in the shape of pineapple. Spiced oranges and currants on the nose. There's fruitcake, also barley, there's a, a subtle barley influence on the nose. Uh, it's very faint, it's quite hard to pick out, but it's definitely there. There's fig present and there's some sort of apple influence. Uh, I think it's stewed apples, it's not like fresh apples or anything like that. Maybe like an apple um, pie or an apple strudel with the lattices over it. There's something, the apples are definitely stewed, they're cooked. A nice nose, lovely nose. Uh, we'll get down to the palate. A great mouthfeel with this whiskey. It's oily, it coats the mouth. There's spiced orange, more uh, kind of currants, more like spicy currants. You get a slight vanilla just near the end and a little bit of hay-like flavour or a hay-like taste as well. Possibly from the nose, uh, progressing on from the barley, that kind of hay feel. There's toast with plum jam. There's a rather subtle, um, quite elegant almond flavour. I don't know how almond can be elegant, but it's subtle. It's um, just brushing on the palate. And there's an earthy tang uh, to this whiskey as well. The finish, for me, spicy straight off. 
there's a real spiciness around the tongue. It's, I would say, short to medium. Um, there is a long kind of lasting umami-like flavour, a kind of bitterness. Um, but m the other flavours, the actual flavours, are quite short to medium, whereas this umami um, bitterness is a bit long, if that makes sense. But I'm not really classing that as the finish, because I think that's just a sensation. Maybe it should be long. We'll go medium to long. We'll say medium to long on the finish. Uh, yeah, an umami and an iron kind of like a, a bloody steak. It's um, bitter, it's irony, that bloody, that bloody taste. Uh, like licking your blood almost. I don't know if that sounds pleasant or sounds good, but it, it's nice. It is good. <sighs> yeah, there's rich iron in that, that finish. For me, this is a good whiskey. Um, it's solid. It's competing with the likes of Glendronach, I'd say. The 15-year-old, compare them. I couldn't really compare them because I've not really had much experience with the Glendronach 15-year-old. The only one I could compare it to, which is similar price, is Glendronach 18. So this is 80, and I believe the Glendronach 18 is 90. In comparison to those two, I know they're different ages. I would go with the Glendronach 18 always over this. It's still lovely though, that's taken nothing away from the Tamdu 15. If you had the choice between the two, I'd go the Glendronach 18. If you had the choice to buy this at £80, I would try and wait until it's on sale. Uh, see if you can get it for 60 or 70, 60 might be a push. I wouldn't buy it again, I've had it, it's lovely, it's been enjoyable, but it's a bit pricey. Um, if you can sample it at the bar, definitely, it's one to try, it's a, it's, it's a good dram, but it's overpriced in my opinion. So for me, although I wouldn't buy it again, and although it's overpriced, it's a whiskey win. It's on the fence for me because of the price. Um, if I was to take the price away, it'd be whiskey win. If I put the price in, it's a whiskey bin. So make of that what you will. Possibly a whiskey bin then because of the price. It's still a great whiskey, but yeah, the price is a little bit. It put, puts me off this whiskey. Uh, thanks for watching. <laughs> I've been Stuart. Uh, if you'd like to subscribe, please do so. I'll see you later.